In this video, we talk about our drive, a very efficient computer memory device that uses simple magnetism to store vast amounts of information. Our drives were invented over 50 years ago and have been used in personal computers since the mid 80s. For a long time, it was the first permanent storage device before being replaced by SSD. In any case, nowadays it is vastly used as secondary storage device. The basic principle of HDD working is the electromagnetism. A coil in which an electric current passes creates a magnetic field which force lines are shown on the picture. If we put a magnetic material in this field, it orientates itself in this way. And if we change the direction of the current, the direction of the magnetic field changes as well, thus changing the orientation of the magnetic material. So in the end, if we change the electric current direction, we change the orientation of the magnetic material. We can have two possible current direction and so two possible orientation states. And this is enough to store information in bits. Usually a magnetic core is used to strengthen the magnetic field. So the writing principle consists in the passing of an electric current to write a 1 and the passing of an opposite current to write a 0. In this way the magnetic material nearby orientates itself accordingly. The important aspect is that when no current passes through the coil, no magnetic field is created, but the magnetic material keeps its orientation, thus storing the information. For the reading principle, we exploit the electromagnetic induction, which states that the variable magnetic field detected by the coils induces an electric current in the coils. We can obtain the magnetic field variation simply moving the coil or moving the magnetized material. So, if a little coil is moved over a magnetized material, a current is created and detecting this current, we can understand the orientation of the magnetized material. So, we can understand if there is a zero or a one. Let's see how it practically works. In our HDD, we have a slider or arm, which holds the writing and reading head. The magnetized material is in grains inside the magnetic cell. The magnetic cells are organized in circular tracks. The writing of a bit is realized flying the head over the proper cell and activating a current to create the electromagnetic field. In our case, we write a 1. For writing a 0 in the near cell, we need to reach the proper position and change the current direction. For reading, we always move the reading head on the cell to be read. The moving head passing over the magnetized material induces a little current with a direction accorded with the orientation of the magnetized grains in the cell. So, we understand if there is a 1 or a 0 by checking the induced electric current direction. So, here you can see all the HDD components. First, the platter. A hard disk drive platter or disk is the circular disk on which magnetic data is stored in a hard disk drive. It is made by ceramic or aluminium and it is coated by the magnetic material where data are stored. The rigid nature of the platters in a hard drive is what gives them their name, as opposed to the flexible materials which were used to make floppy disks. Hard drives typically have several platters which are mounted on the same spindle. A platter can store information on both sides, requiring two heads per platter. Second, there is the slider or arm. Hard disk read-write heads are too small to be used without attaching them to a larger unit. This is especially true of modern hard disk heads. 
Each hard disk head is therefore mounted to a special device called a head slider or just a slider for short. The function of the slider is to physically support the head and hold it in the correct position relative to the platter as the head floats over its surface. Third, the spindle. A typical HDD design consists of a spindle. The spindle is what holds a hard drive splatters in place. With a traditional hard drive there is the need to have multiple platters. The spindle holds these platters in a fixed position with enough space for the read-write arms to get the data on the disks. The spindle is rotated by a motor so that platters are rotated. The spindle motor must provide stable rotation for many hours. Fourth, the actuator. An actuator is an electronic device controlled by a motor that moves the hard drive head R. So, you see there are two motors on the HDD. The spindle motor which rotates the disks and the actuator motor which moves the arm. With these two movements, the head can be carried over the desired sector of the disk. Now we see how the information are organized in the disks. The data is stored in a very orderly pattern on each platter. Each platter is divided in thousands of concentric circles known as tracks. Each track is divided in smaller units called sectors. Sector is the basic unit of data storage on our disk and can be, for example, of 512 bytes or 4096 bytes. A cylinder is the collection of all track at the same distance of the edge of the platter. We have two heads for each platter, one for the top face and one for the bottom face. To select a track sector, I need three data. First, the cylinder, second, the heads, and third, the sector. Part of the R drive stores a map of sectors that have already been used up and others that are still free. In Windows, this map is called the File Allocation Table or FAT32 or nowadays NTFS. When the computer wants to store new information, it takes a look at the map to find some free sectors. Then it instructs the read-write head to move across the platter to exactly the right location and store the data there. To read information, the same process runs in reverse. We saw HDD needs two motors to locate the right position for reading and writing. With all these mechanical moving parts, time is quite an issue. Now we see the main timing of the HDD. First, there is seek time. It is the time required by the head arm to reach the desired track or cylinder. So, the time to move from a track to another, in our case the time the arm needs to go from track 1000 to track 2000. Second, we have the rotational latency, which is the time required to reach the desired sector being already in the desired track. The sum between seek time and rotational latency is called access time. It is the time taken by the reading head to reach the desired track and sector. After finding the desired sector, we have to read it. Read time is the time required by the reading head to read a wall sector. The wall operation takes the transmission time, which is the sum of access time and read time. So we saw the main timing of HDD and now we give a sight of how fast an HDD is. Other elements being equal, the rotational speed of the platter is an important element. The rotational speed is measured in RPM or revolution per minute. Being composed by moving hardware, arms and platters, the HDD performance is not very good. In the table, you can see the usually RPM and sequential performances. Better HDD can improve the performances up to 255 megabytes per second 
which is always lower than the SATA 3 cable performances, which is more or less 600 megabytes per second. SATA 3 is the cable which connects HDD with the motherboard. SSD, on the contrary, is limited by SATA 3, so it is better use it with PCIe interface to exploit the read speed of 3500 megabytes per second. The advantage of HDD is still the huge amount of data you can store and the price. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you liked this video. Make sure you put the thumb up, click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel.